Hey guys, James here today and welcome back to another house building video. Uh, this is a, a much requested style of home from myself. Uh, people often ask for larger homes for larger families because I tend to build smaller things and the reason I do that is because A, it's easier to set a detailer with a lot of items uh, because there's not a, a whole ton of items in the game just yet. And B, because I just find it more fun doing smaller spaces. Uh, and I, I often get stumped uh, when I start, start building a little bit larger. But you know, I thought it was time. It's time we do a large house again, because I did a few at the very beginning uh, when The Sims 4 first came out, but it's been a while, so let's do another one. Uh, I wanted there to be a beautiful diagonal part of the house, as you can see I did out the front there, because, you know, sometimes the, the world is just stuck to the grid a little too much. Doing some diagonal walls do make it a little bit more interesting and much, much harder to actually roof and furnish when you start working with diagonals. But it, it's usually, it usually produces quite interesting results. So this home uh, is basically an estate family home, as the title probably suggests. Uh, it's got five bedrooms, three bathrooms. I believe there's two, three double beds in the bedrooms, one single bedroom, and then a bedroom with two single beds. So you can fit you know, at least eight sims in here. And then if you cheat, you could probably fit more. But, you know, it's all good. So, just going around, figuring out how I want to do the roof right now. I tried to keep, yeah, so I went for like a, a contemporary sort of home. Uh, and I, I tried to stick to that quite well. So as you can see, I'm just adding some detail on the side here. Just uh, sort of indented a little bit. I was going to try, I was trying to add a little roof on the side bit there, but it... It didn't really look that great, so I was like, uh, no. Uh, just doing a front little porch here as well. I wanted the whole house to be up on a small foundation. I didn't want it to be flat on the ground, because that sometimes doesn't have enough detail for my liking. So I put it on a little bit of a foundation, added a little bit of a front porch, and we have a bit of space in the front garden. That was another thing I wanted to do, actually, is have... Uh, a proper sort of enclosed garden, or enclosed garden rather, I don't know why I said enclosed. Uh, enclosed garden because, uh, you know, get a nice big fence around it, get a big swimming pool and beautiful entertaining area. And that's sort of what I went for in this one. Uh, so just doing a little balcony up the top there for one of the bedrooms, which unfortunately isn't actually the uh, the master bedroom. That actually comes off one of the, the lesser bedrooms, unfortunately. But uh, the master bedroom, they do have a balcony. That's the one I'm just doing there. Not quite as uh, luxurious luxurious as the other one, but that's okay. Uh, now, here's where the diagonal part of the house becomes a little bit annoying, as you can see right there in between the roofs. Uh, it has parts of the roof which don't line up and they don't join to get them nicely. I hope one day, whether it be in The Sims 4 or in The Sims 5, they find a solution to make roofs join together properly because it's incredibly annoying. But I was able to remedy it by just putting a, uh, a chimney on top of the house and just covering it up. Although, I don't think there's any fireplaces in this home. We'll, we'll look at it as, you know, it's a relic. It, it, the house used to have it, then it, ren it got renovated, and now it doesn't. But it's just left over. That's kind of like my house in real life. Well, not my house, my parents' house. Uh, they have, uh, well, I, I, okay. We have, because I still live here, that's why I said it's my house. Anyways, we used to have a fireplace. Uh, but we covered it up because we don't need a fireplace anymore. But the chimney's still there because it was way too expensive to get rid of it. So it's like, all right, got a decorative chimney. It looks beautiful. That's what this house has. <laughs> yeah, cool. Uh, so going around, I was trying to, I was really trying to figure out colors for this home. But in the end, I did actually leave it fairly, uh, sort of, you know, nondescript, a very contemporary style of home. Like you see it a lot nowadays where new homes are being built and they're just sort of a whitish gray or they're just gr tones of gray or something like that. It's very much the quote unquote in style at the moment. So I went for a nice stone sort of archway here at the front of the house and then pretty much kept it that sort of light whitish gray. Uh, and the way I introduce color is much later on when I start doing the gardening. I add a bunch of flowers in, I add some shrubs, we got all the fencing in. So all the color comes through the gardening and the landscaping, not so much from the house. So that means that, you know, you can do any type of garden you want and it will fit with the house just fine. Something I did struggle with a lot was the windows. <laughs> And you'll see me spending quite a bit of time on it. I also, um, I believe, I need to double check this. I tried my hardest to use only base game content so that hopefully there shouldn't be any stuff packs or game packs or expansion packs that you need to download this. I'm not 100% sure, 
Because sometimes an item, I'll accidentally place an item and then it'll be like, oh, you require this stuff pack or whatever. But I'm just double checking it now. I'm pulling up the page and having a look. Uh, I don't think it requires. Hang on, let me look at another, another download that I know does require another game. Uh, this doesn't tell me. I think I need to load up the game to be able to see. Because I'm on the website, the gallery website, but it doesn't tell me. Let me load up the game whilst recording this because, you know, actually, I don't know if that's a great idea, but we'll see how we go. Uh, <laughs> see how we go. So loading up the game. Uh, yeah, anyways, while the game is loading up and I'm trying to figure out whether or not this requires, you know, stuff packs or whatever. Uh, I'm trying to build an interior sort of, uh, or just like a, a what, you, what would you call it? A walkway, a, I don't know, we'll just call it a bridge for the sake of, for the sake that I can't think of the actual word. Walkway, what do you call it? A catwalk kind of thing? Anyway, I'm trying to create a bridge here and have like open walls. Uh, open floor, sorry, on either side. So you sort of walk in across and you look down to the level below. But as you can see, they still haven't fixed the glitch in the game where if you complete a room with a half wall or a fence, that the roof on the outside will actually start rendering and clip in to the walls. That has been a bug since before release because as some of you may or may not know, I got to go to the, the Sims studio a month before The Sims 4 came out. So this was... When did the game come out? September of 2014. So I was there in... Uh, what, August? Yeah, August. So I was there in August 2014. Wait, is that right? I don't, <laughs> that's right, isn't it? June, July, August, September. Yeah, okay, it would have been August. Definitely would have been August. Uh, we were there one month before the game released, and I actually found this bug while I was there for the, the two or three days we were playing the game. And I was like, oh, hey, like, I even mentioned it to SimGuru Houts, uh, who is the build designer on the Sims 4. He's still there. And then also John Burgess, who used to be working on build mode, but then he uh, he's left EA and I don't know what he's doing now. But anyway, they were aware of it. I told them that and they're like, okay, cool. We'll take, we'll bring, we'll bring this up with the team and, and, and all that kind of stuff. I was like, oh, cool. All right. So hopefully this should be good. A uh, year later, you know, fast forward a year later, it's still in the game. Uh, this either means two things. One, they forgot about it, which I highly doubt because I'm always tweeting about it and getting angry and tagging them in it. So they know it still exists. Or B, that it's significantly harder to solve than they first thought, which I'm hoping that's the reason and not the fact that they've forgotten or ignored it. But in any case, it's incredibly annoying. <laughs> you may have seen the workaround I just did. Uh, so what I've done, I actually, instead of using a fence or a, a half wall, I actually just used a regular wall and slapped some large windows on it so you can still see through. And it, it does actually make it kind of, I kind of like that idea the way I did it because then it, it, it creates the, the landing area upstairs means it's actually enclosed and separate from the downstairs. So you wouldn't have a ton of sound carrying all the way through the house. So it'd kind of be a little bit quieter upstairs, which I guess kind of works. Uh, anyways, my game loaded up a while ago, but I was, I was busy talking about that bug, which I hope is fixed because it's really annoying that you can't just create a balcony upstairs without a roof coming through the walls. It's okay when you create a balcony and you don't have a roof on the level. Like if I didn't have any roofs on that first floor, it'd be fine. But because I do, it doesn't work and it's very, very annoying. Anyway, I'm in my game. Let me open up the gallery. <laughs> Let's see what the house requires because this is how prepared I am when I jump into these recordings. All right, loading my gallery page. Taking a while. Game is frozen. Not a good sign. Waiting for it to respond. There we go, it's responding. Okay, let's open up this. All right, so I don't think it requires anything. Let me look at another download to be sure. Yeah, okay, so it, yeah, it's base game only. I didn't use any stuff pack content, game pack or expansion pack content. So get excited, you can download it no matter which you know configuration of Sims 4 you have. All right, let me quit the Sims 4 now. Don't need that open anymore. Right, what's going on? We've done a layout upstairs, I think a little bit, and we've worked on a layout downstairs. So it's all starting to come together. And you can see here that I've, oh, well, not right now, but <laughs> I'm going through and placing lights. But the living room, oh, okay, well, you, you'll see it as we start furnishing. The living room on the left-hand side of the house is kind of like a sunken one. I've got stairs going down to it. it. I haven't done, I really haven't done a lot of sort of split-level homes in The Sims 4. It is totally possible. And if you watch my uh, Let's Build a Cop Shop series, you'll know, obviously, we did some split leveling in that. But I don't often do it in homes, so I definitely wanted to pick it up in this one. Even though it's like a, a one step down, I thought it was kind of interesting to throw that in there. Uh, but here we are working on the kitchen slash diner area, keeping it large 
Uh, nice open plan. I wanted the home to feel like open, but not too open. That's why the most of the rooms are still separate, uh, but they're sort of all joined by the main hallway network. It's kind of like, so the kitchen diner area is nice and open so you can talk and have an entertaining sort of space right there. And also it goes out to the sort of back uh, patio porch deck. I don't know. Any one of those words <laughs> goes out to the back area there so you can, of course, open up the doors, have a beautiful time entertaining all your all of your guests. Uh, and then, of course, we have the lo two. There's two actually large living rooms, one super large living room on the ground floor here and then one slightly smaller one. But we'll get to that as time progresses. Of course, putting all the high tech, high end gear in the kitchen, got the most expensive fridge and stove, most expensive microwave, of course, and just going through and starting to furniture. So throughout this home, I've tried to do a sort of contemporary clean style uh, for a couple of reasons. I mentioned at the beginning of the video that I often have trouble filling up large homes, especially when I'm only using base game content. So I was like, all right, let, let's keep the style, let's keep it clean. Let's keep it kind of like how you would put the home on display. So if you're going to open your home to the public and it was going to be like a show home, people are going to come around and see if they want to buy it or whatever. That's how I'm going to decorate this. So it's kind of like a catalog home, you know, you go in there, you're like, oh, it looks beautiful. It's so clean. So I went with that because, like I said, it's much easier to do such a massive space like that. I could spend like five hours doing clutter throughout the home, but then it might not even look good at the end of it. So I was like, okay, let's keep it clean. Uh, also, that's a really cool feature. You might have just missed it there, but you can now scale up rugs. That was a while ago, actually, that that was up that was an, an update. When was that? Like a couple of weeks ago now? Uh, or maybe it was a little bit longer. But yeah, they introduced the ability to scale up rugs, finally, because I always wanted to do that. You have some of these really small rugs, and I want to be a little bit bigger. So I was able to do that, finally. Uh, but yeah, I was just having a look into the space there. Thought we'd accent that wall with a beautiful green so it matches the stools in the kitchen area. Uh, and doing the downstairs bathroom. So we have one downstairs bathroom. We have a couple upstairs. One of them upstairs is an ensuite, and the other one is just for everybody else. Uh, kind of nice. I'm doing a little interesting thing here. I actually saw this on, uh, I think it was a Sims uh, community blog uh, when someone did building a bathroom or something. They're like, oh, you could do like a little half wall section and put like flowers in it. I don't know. I thought it looked pretty cool. So I was like, all right, I'm totally going to do that. It looks awesome. So we've got little flowers there in the bathroom uh, to sort of accent the space a little bit. And we're trying to fit every, absolutely everything we can in this bathroom so we can have uh, a full-size bathroom with a bath, shower, toilet, and a sink. So you can do everything you need to do in there because especially if you have eight sims and you want a bunch of them to shower in the morning or whatever having more bathrooms that are that have everything in it definitely quite important uh but yeah so now we've done the kitchen dining and uh bathroom area there i was just trying to see if there's a, a floor i wanted to go with a little more so it turns out there wasn't i just wanted to stick with the floorboards now here is the giant living room i was telling you about the one that is sort of sunken into the ground obviously you can see it's a little bit below the rest of the house which is quite nice gives it a little bit of depth uh, but yeah, so we put the absolutely massive TV in there uh, just for a little bit of fun. This is this is like the crown jewel of the home. Like when you go over to this person's house, you're like, damn, that's a big TV. Like you always see these TVs in stores. Uh, and when you're going around, you're like, wow, it'd be pretty cool to have that TV. I was actually in, uh, I, was, I was going to the store the other day, uh, the electronics store, and they have, all, it, it's actually incredible. So uh, the TV I have is like a 42 inch TV. And it's like, well, first of all, remember back in the day when 42 inch TVs were massive uh, and, and looking at it now, like it's sitting next to me here in my office. It's a good, it's a really good size. It fits perfectly. But whenever you go into like the electronics store and you see all the TVs there, you're like, you look at it and you're like, that's, that's 42 inches. That's tiny. They look so small when they're in such a big store. And when you have like 50 TVs next to them, you're like, wow, that's tiny. So let me tell you kids, uh, when you go TV shopping, be absolutely certain the TV you're getting can fit in the space you're putting it in because some of the TVs that are like 60, 70 inches, you'd be like in the store, you'd be like, oh yeah, that's perfect. That'll fit in. Then you're like, oh, actually crap. No, that's incredibly massive. But the one they had on display, I think was like, um, I think it was like a 79 inch TV. And I'm like, holy crap. You would have to have a massive room. Like, don't get me wrong. I could fit it in this space where I am now. But it'd be way too big. I don't even I, I don't even know what resolution it was. It must have been 4K. If it was anything less than 4K, you'd be at like the pixels would probably be a centimeter by a centimeter each. <laughs> Anyways, a little chat about TVs, a little bit of fun. So let's move on to maybe something a little bit more on topic. Uh, how about the, uh, I don't know. <laughs> 
<laughs> These videos are never on top. If we just sort of sit back and we have a chat and enjoy the ride. And hopefully, by the way, this video is in 1440p, 60 FPS. Like, come on. Give me some props for that. That, this, I, I don't know how big the file is going to be, but it's going to take me about like probably th th uh, five, I'm going to get five hours to upload. 1440p for like half an hour <laughs> at 60 FPS. Now, the reason I do that, uh, I'm, tr I'm really, really trying lately. Uh, I've made a promise to myself that I know I will not keep, and I've also made a promise to you guys that I know I will not keep, and is that my videos will at least be 1080p from now on, whether it be 30 or 60 FPS, it kind of depends on what the video is. Um, like, for example, there's no point doing Sims 1 and 60 FPS, because I'm pretty sure that doesn't go up to 60. Anyway, that's my loose promise, because I really want to do 1080p, but the problem with it is with my internet, for a example, a 40 minute video it takes me 200 minutes to upload it. It doesn't take me long to render it or anything like that on my computer. So my internet speed is absolutely awful. But I'm, I really want to do 1080p 60 video, 60 FPS videos just because it do, it really does look that much better. Um, but for the sake of time constraints in the past, I haven't really got around to it. But I'm, I'm going to try. I'm really going to try. And especially with build videos. So with house building videos, I think I did this on one of the previous ones. I don't think the last one was uh, 144060, but one of them was 144060. Uh, and on house building videos, I really want to do it at that resolution because if you upscale a video uh, to a higher resolution, that means you get a higher bit rate. So even if you're only watching on a 1080p monitor, if your internet can handle watching 1440p on a 1080p monitor, it will look better than the 1080p counterpart, if that makes sense. So if your internet can handle it, Make sure you turn up this video to the, to the top quality settings and it will, it will, I guarantee it will look much better than on the lower settings. <laughs> so please, you know, I'm putting the effort in and putting the time in to upload this video because it's going to take a lifetime to upload. I want you guys to enjoy it in beautiful, crispy quality. Not quite 4K, a uh, couple of reasons. Don't have a 4K monitor. And second of all, that would take even infinitely longer than a 1440p video. So there's that. Anyways, that's uh, that's the news in terms of video like quality, upload quality, I guess. I'm, I'm going to try. I am really going to try. If there's a 720p video here or there, the reason for that is because I didn't have enough time to upload it in 1080p. <laughs> so, so now you know. All right, so we've moved upstairs to the bedrooms now. Uh, so we've got five bedrooms. I kind of just went through and gave them each a light kind of pastel color. You can see the one next to it was like that light blue. Then there's kind of a salmon color. Uh, then there's a green. I think I changed one of them to like a lilac maybe at some point. Maybe I don't. I can't remember. Anyway, furnishing the master bedroom here. Uh, going kind of against the grain with that sofa. That sort of fancy little love seat. I don't know. It, it seemed kind of, kind of classical. Kind of nice. Thought I'd chuck that in there. And then keeping the rest of the furniture pretty contemporary. Like the bed, the, the, the dresser and the little side table there. Keeping it all, you know, quite new. Quite stylish, I guess you could say in a way. Uh, I was going to do that rug there, but the rug looked awful. So I replaced it with my own rug made out of carpet floor tiles, which I think just looks so much better. <laughs> it fits the space better and it doesn't have an awful pattern on it. So that's quite nice. Moving on to the bathroom now. Wanted to get the large spa in there. It was not going to fit. So I was like, all right. Okay. All right. As much as I want to get that spa in there, it's not going to happen. Uh, but yeah. What else is new? So... I, as well as, because uh, here's what's going to happen. While I was talking about higher quality video, like 1080p videos, that means I have to do my videos earlier on. Because normally, what I sort of, use, I got into the pattern where I was recording the videos at like 8pm for my time. And the, the videos are for me. Okay, so my schedule was kind of record around 8pm-ish. So it'd be like after dinner time for me. Uh, and then the videos go live at 3 a.m. my time. So that gives me that gave me quite a bit of time. What about eight hours or so to record, edit, and post the videos, which was okay. But sometimes I would get a little bit delayed and then the video wouldn't go live to like five or six in the morning for me, which is a, not quite when I want to post it. And now doing, now that I want really, I really want to go serious about 1080, 60 videos, means I have to do them even earlier in the day, which I did today. So I'm quite happy about that. And I did it yesterday as well. But what this does mean, and another reason I'm trying to do this and trying to get, sort of do my videos earlier on in the day is because I, I keep, I really, really want to get into live streaming way more often. But the problem I had before with doing videos at 8 p.m. is that, yeah, sure, I could record them and post them fine. 
but they wouldn't actually like it would take me all that time up until about you know 2 30 in the morning to actually upload the videos because the upload time for the videos is what really prevents me from live streaming because sometimes i'm like after i record my videos i'm like oh yeah i really want to live stream now oh wait no i've got to wait about you know three hours until these videos are uploaded so the plan is get the high quality videos in 1080p done earlier get them uploaded they're all done and then i have plenty of time to stream afterwards also you know if i get a day or two ahead that also helps uh, that's the plan, moving forward anyway. We'll see how we go with it. Uh, I had a lot of time to sort of mull this over and think about it because, as you may know, about the last week of my channel, there hasn't been any videos. The reason for that was uh, I ended up going to PAX Australia. This, this will make this will be irrelevant if you're watching this sometime that isn't today when I post a video. But anyway, I ended up going to PAX Australia, which in case you don't know, is, you know, exactly like PAX Prime, PAX East in the US, but it's PAX in Australia. So it's a gaming convention, uh, essentially. Uh, we went down there, it was, that was Critic Zeus and I. Uh, you may know Zeus because we do a lot of videos together here and there. Anyway, we went down there together, we were down there to cover the event. Uh, I make a bunch of videos for Intel, uh, which you can find on my other channel, which is linked down below. My other channel is Flabaliki. You can find a link down below. We did about four videos per day at the convention, so that was 12 videos overall. And we were, oh my god, that was the most exhausting, but the most rewarding time of my life, I think. It was, it like, it was a lot of work. So we would get up at, well, I would get up at like 7.30 in the morning, you know, get ready, leave the hotel at 8 a.m. to go have breakfast. Get to the convention by 9, because I, I, it opened to the public at 10 a.m. each day, but we could get in at 9. Get there at 9, we start filming at 9, uh, and film throughout the day until about... We can't, we, we usually wrapped up around 2 or 3 p.m. in terms of recording the videos. Then we go to the media room or back to our hotel, edit those four videos and post them on that day. We'd be done that around 5 or 6 p.m. And then, then you have the uh, the parties, of course, uh, each of the parties. So the first night was actually, uh, the first night we didn't do, I don't think we did anything before the panel. Because I was also on panels at 9pm on the first night, 9.30pm the second night, and then 12, like midday the third day. <sighs> Basically, long story short, we were absolutely wrecked. And, and the thing is, we didn't find out we were 100% going until about three or so days before pack so i didn't really have time to <laughs> to i didn't even have time to post a video saying i was going to pax uh and then then i was there for three days and i took two days off afterwards because like yesterday and the uh well i guess it was monday and tuesday when i got back i was just like <laughs> i was so destroyed i was so exhausted but it was so much fun we got so much done i met a lot of awesome people there as well which is really really cool i met some of you guys as well watching this video probably i did meet uh, a few of you fans over there uh it would have been good and and i think i would have loved to do a like a meetup outside of pax while i was in melbourne but we were literally flat out the entire three days like even the people like i met i ran into a few guys at the convention that i had met at previous events and i've known them for a while but I, it was literally hi good to see you bye we're filming something and i felt really really bad about that but we were literally working the entire time it was and one of the day the second day it was actually we were filming 9 a.m to 5 p.m the entire sort of day nine to five then we had to go back to the hotel edit the videos for about two hours we're done at seven then we went to the went to a party uh before our panel at 9 30 p.m then we did the the 9 30 p.m panel that one that one was with myself deligracy and critic zeus we played until dawn live on stage i wish because i know some of you are asking this right now i wish we had a recording of that but they didn't record it or live stream it which really sucks but it went really well people loved it that they were, that were there uh, the feedback was really good, so hopefully we can do something fun again next year at PAX, and maybe they'll, you know, maybe they'll record it. Um, but yeah, so that that day, and then we got back to the hotel. We 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 could have gone to another party after the, after the panel, uh, but we kind of hung out around till about 11 p.m. I think it was like 11:30. Got back to the hotel at 12. So that was an absolute exhausting day, and then we still had more to do the next day. But I'll tell you what, it was so much fun. It was so much fun going around. Because uh, normally, like, I've never I've never been to a convention and actually, like, fully, like, full-on covered it with making videos, going around, talking to people who are doing interviews and all that kind of stuff. But it was such an experience. It was so cool to do that. Uh, that was really, really cool. And, the, yeah, like I said, the only bad, bad thing about it was I didn't really have any time to do, first of all, my own meetup or even chat to people that were there. And that kind of sucks. I felt really bad about that. But it was pretty much we flew in the day before PAX. 
Uh, it was kind of like the evening before. We went to a, a Twitch sort of meetup. It was just an unofficial Twitch meetup. Just went to a sort of a local bar or whatever it was. Had a meetup, met some guys, met some streamers that go on Twitch. And there's also a couple of employees from Twitch there as well. Uh, had a chat with them, which was really cool. Uh, then the next three days we were working solid. And on the third day, the third day, I think was possibly the hardest. We weren't working for the longest on that day, but fitting a schedule in on that day was hard. We got there at nine. We filmed two videos before 10 a.m. So we did two videos within an hour, which is amazing. Uh, then the last two videos took another like two hours. Uh, by that time, it was about 11.30. So we went, then we went to the media room, started editing. We, got, we edited about one video. Then at 12, I had to leave to go prepare for my YouTube panel, which you can watch. I think that's up on their Twitch uh, twitch.tv slash PAX, if you go to past broadcasts, it'll be day three. I was on uh, a YouTube panel, uh, just talking about YouTube in general, what it's, you know, what it's like to be a YouTube gamer in Australia, etc. That was with myself, Emma uh, XE Games, or EXE Games, I never know how to say her username, even she doesn't. Um, that was with Muzel Lachlan, like Lachlan YT Gaming, or whatever his thing is, I feel bad. I should know what his us username is because he has like, well, like 1.3 million subscribers and he does Minecraft. I'm sure some of you know him. Uh, and the other one was Silent Core. Anyway, we did that panel. So that panel took up an hour. So that by after it was 12.30 to 1.30. Then we apparently had a signing that we were supposed to do that nobody told us about, which was another like 45 minutes after that. Uh, and then after that, we had to go, then I had to run back to the media room. Actually, on... <laughs> Okay, so in this signing thing, there was like a whole line of- I don't have enough time to finish the story. I don't have- this video is going to end very soon because we're in the screenshots. I'll, I'll do it quickly. Uh, at the signing, uh, because we hadn't been told about the signing, Lachlan, who obviously has 1.3 million subs, had a ton of people there to see him, but he was doing his own meetup outside, so we had to direct those people to go outside. Then another one of the guys on the panel didn't even- didn't know we were having the, the signing there, so he was off doing something else, so we had to call him and make him come back over so we could sign for his fans. Uh, and, and then another one, Emma, who was actually working at the convention as well, who didn't know about the signing, had to go back to her booth and work. Oh, it was, it was a little bit of a mess. But anyway, after that, after I started heading back to the media room, I actually met like a whole bunch of people on the way back, which I thought was quite funny. I think I met more people on the way back to the media room than I had at the actual signing, mainly because people didn't know about it. I didn't know about it either. But anyway... Uh, so that was fantastic to meet some people. Then I went back to the media room, finally caught up with Zeus again, who was working hard. I think he'd done a couple of videos then. Had to finish the editing on the rest of the videos. Then we had to actually upload them, uh, get them posted. And then we had about an hour or so to hang out with Deligracy, because obviously we hadn't really had much time to just hang out with her, but we had about an hour. Uh, we didn't really do much. We sort of just walked around Melbourne trying to find a coffee shop, which were then... There were none, because in the area of the convention, it's not a particularly great area for like coffee shops and that and also it was like 5 30 p.m on a sunday night so not an ideal time uh and then we had our flight out at 8 45 p.m which so we left uh about 6 30 p.m for the airport got there way too early uh we had some Krispy cream donuts for the airport and a coffee uh then our flight was delayed because there was storms in sydney so we didn't take off till even later and we were at the airport for ages uh, but yeah, no, that was uh, the weekend. That's that. I hope that explains to you why there wasn't really any videos for a week if you're watching this right now. And I hope you enjoyed the story either way, but there's all the screenshots. Download link for this house is, uh, is below. You can click on that or you can search hashtag the Sims Supply on the gallery and find it. You can probably also search the title, but thanks for watching. I'll see you next time and have an awesome day.